Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to October 30th, October 30th, uh, 2022. And work, welcome to Workum. Welcome to a church in the world where we like to remind ourselves and others that the church is a people, not a building. And actually, I'm going to be emphasizing that a little bit more, actually, because it fits in quite well with what I want to discuss today a little bit later. So I uh, want to give a shout out to uh, all the folks who went out and played golf. So Jared McGlotton, Lynn McGlotton, and Tim Hogan, we had a great time playing golf at the uh, Golf by Faith, uh, hosted by Pastor Decker Tapscott and Faith Church and Faith Christian Church and Interna International Outreach Center. Uh, FCC IOC, uh, who's been a great supporter of A Church in the World. And actually, uh, Angelique and I went to Pastor Tapscott first before we even got started with A Church in Warrington back in 2013. So it was great to be out there. We had a beautiful day. We did not play as well as we would have hoped uh, in, in playing, but it was a gorgeous time. Uh, just the leaves in Virginia right now, they, uh, as you know, they're falling. So there's so many different colors, the oranges, the reds, the golds, and some green still left too. It's just so, so beautiful. And yesterday was a beautiful blue sky. I think it was in the low 60s. So it was really, really a great time. So anyway, that was a gorgeous time uh, that we had uh, yesterday. So we had a little bit different. We did not have a musical, uh, musical. We did not have worship. worship. I can't talk today. You know what? It's because I haven't had the tea my wife made for me yet. So again, I am better. I am better than last week. I'm still just not totally there. So I needed to have the tea made with love first. So now I can talk properly. All right. So. What I wanted to, to say is we had a little bit different intro, I want to call it worship. We, we did not have our worship music for this week because I wanted, thought it was important to keep up the topic we have for today, which will, after we do this, uh, obviously go through the service, so I'm going to have this up for a little bit longer today and then we'll actually then post uh this this worship service a little bit later today but it is should christians celebrate halloween and this is a very important subject i believe and there are different opinions on it so if you didn't didn't get an opportunity to watch it beforehand it will be on afterwards after the service and obviously, if it's then we post on AC because on ACIWonline.church or online church, we have different thing, we have different videos and information and trainings that come on throughout the week. If you miss that, should Christians celebrate Halloween, it is always on our video, our YouTube page, which is video.aciw.org. So I encourage you to listen to it. There's many different opinions from people I respect. Uh, there's people that I respect that I actually disagree with on this subject. Uh, but I wanted to give you some different views. So there's that, there's three different views or perspectives on Halloween from a Christian perspective on that video. It's only about 10 minutes. So it's, it's uh, not too long. And I think it's very worthwhile for us to know. Anyway, so without further ado, as those of you who've been following us on AC with us at ACIW, we always start off with our scripture reading for the day. And my brother from another mother, Daryl Bailey, uh, Minister Daryl Bailey, will be giving the scripture reading for today. So without further ado, please take it away, Daryl. Good morning, thanks. This is our scripture reading for today. And we're reading from 1 Corinthians 1 through 5. And it reads as follows. This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you 
or by any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself, for I am aware of anything, for I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not therefore acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, I do not pronounce judgment before the time, before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in the darkness and would disclose, disclose the purposes of the heart. Then each one will receive his commandment from God. Wow, that's a powerful word. May Lord have a blessing to his already blessed word. Have a great day. Thank you very much, Daryl, for giving that reading. Uh, that is especially, and we're actually going to hit this a little bit more, but I want to kind of emphasize the verses four and five, for I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time, before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Then each one will receive his commendation from God. And that's definitely something we want to talk about today. So that we'll, we'll reference that a little bit more later. So as I get started on for today's message, one of the things I do want to point out, I have never been a part of any intelligence agency, like for example, the FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation, or the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, or even a military. Uh, I've never been a part of that in, again, whether it's United States or other places. And whatever the equivalent is, whether it's in France or Liberia or Singapore, wherever it is, I, I, I haven't. I have not been in that situation. Uh, I have worked for telecom companies and we've had government contracts, but never to, to that level. With these organizations, the best of my ability, and I do know some folks who were in the military. I did know someone who actually was retired, I think it was retired FBI, is that there are situations where you just cannot talk about it. It, it, it is secret, it is quote unquote secret, and it needs to be. And sometimes it's only a few people that know. But sometimes it's really just one or two, it's just two people that know. And sometimes it's to the point where maybe other people know about what's going on, but the ultimate purpose of what is trying to be accomplished is actually only known by one person. Only one person. That is hard because one of the things I want to talk about is that I, if you look in history and in, in certain things that have happened, there are those situations where there's only like one person who ultimately knows how everything fits together and what is trying to be accomplished. And what is actually accomplished when it comes to fruition is actually something which is really good. And that people would actually want to compliment you and thank you but you have to keep it secret for your entire life you can never tell anybody i don't know about for you i usually want to receive some credit and i'm going to talk about that a little bit more later so today, with what we're going to talk about in following after Jesus, he's going to talk about a situation for us where only God needs to know. It is something which is just between you and God. Nobody else should know. Well, let's put it this way. Nobody else needs to know. Only God needs to know. Let's pray. Lord, you know, please help me, Lord. Please help me, Holy Spirit, to, to speak your words. It seems like every week 
there is so much conviction with what is in your word for myself. And please help me, Lord, to speak your entire truth and not sugarcoat anything to make me feel better. Uh, cut, chisel, sand, blast, whatever needs to be done in my heart, Father God. So I actually desire in everything I do for you to be glorified and, and for you to receive 100% of the glory and for me to receive none of it from the world. This, you know, is a challenge, challenging subject for me that I'm covering today. It reveals so much of my sinfulness and selfishness. Hopefully in bearing my soul in this passage and sharing it with others, uh, it will be a blessing to those who hear this. Father, I ask you to guide my words, my emotions, my expressions for your glory and your glory alone. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Ah, sorry, I forgot to say thank you and hello to everyone uh, part of the uh, Church in the World family. Those of you who are here in the Virginia, North Carolina, California uh, area who, are, are, who come together with us online and those who are online but are at our local congregations who meet in person in Painesville and Barnersville, Liberia. So hello to everyone uh, around the world. All right, let's go to our verse. We have just finally, we're still on the Sermon on the Mount. We have finally finished the six antitheses. Yes, we've gotten through all six. And so now we've moved from chapter five in Matthew to chapter six. So what we're going to cover today is chap the first four verses in chapter six. First four verses in chapter six. And they read as follows. They read as follows. Oh, I forgot to mention. I did remember those of you who are here online, the notes section does have all of the scriptures. I did remember again. So I think that's two weeks in a row. We're trying to do it every week. So uh, thank you, Lord, for helping me with that. So, all right, Matthew 6, verses 1 through 4. Matthew 6, verses 1 through 4. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Praise be to God's word. Ah, this is a obviously challenging verse and verses, especially for myself, uh, on this. So we're just going to start right away and we're going to go through verse by, by verse. We always do that, but I'm going to actually separate the verses out for the most part. So we're going to start at verse one and I'm going to reread verse one. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. A major point that Jesus is emphasizing to his disciples, not just here in verse 1 through 4, it's actually we're going to see this for the next few weeks. And that is that obedience in public where you sit, where people see you acting a certain way in public, where they would say, wow, you are actually obeying God, does not guarantee a reward from God. Okay? It doesn't guarantee it. 
because one's motive is more important than the action. One's motive is more important than the action. I love to ask questions and, and have feedback. So those of you who are live, who I see on live, here's the first question. And I'm going to see if, can I do this? Oh, I'm going to see if I can do this with the voice recognition. So see we go this. So here's the question. Do you know any people who act one way in public, but act different in private? Question mark. Ooh, that worked. Hopefully you can see that, those of you online. And you can just, you can either just uh, say yes, or just, you know, oh, there it goes. Say yes, or hit the like, or hand clap, or heart, or whatever it is. I'm just trying to see, does it, is it just me? Oh, I got a few people. So it's not just me. Is that there are some people and I actually, you know, I said some. I, I'll, I'll use some, but it seems like it's more than I thought it would be growing up. It's more than I thought. And I have to be honest. I don't see a big differentiation between non-Christians and Christians in this. Sometimes we as Christians, I, I think sometimes we're kind of almost the worst. Is that, for example, we put on this one mask when we go to church. We might be driving to church, just been terrible. And then we get out of the car with the kids and stuff. And then the our actual how we are feeling is one thing. And then when we get out of the car, we just like, we take a mask out and put it over our faces for the next hour, hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours. You're going to the black church. And we do that. And then as soon as we get back in the car, we're a different way again. And Jesus addresses this directly in verse two. So let's go to verse two. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. Now, let's, let's, there's a number of things I want to go through and give you proper context from this verse to help you to understand it. All right. When Jesus says, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, I want you to understand there was not a situation back in the first century that when you gave, so to speak, you actually were trumpets. There were trumpets. Okay. However, there is something that you would probably help you to understand this. So let's go back to some of the research that I was able to find. So here, and I'm quoting from here, it seems most likely that Jesus is referring to a practice of proclaiming public fasts by the sounding of trumpets. At such times, prayers for rain were recited in the streets, and it was widely thought that almsgiving, here you go, so listen, almsgiving, giving to the poor, that's almsgiving, or the needy, ensure the efficacy or the success of the fasts and the prayers. I'm going to read that again. Okay. It was widely thought at that time. So the trumpets have been blown, blown, blown. I probably need some more tea. The trumpets have been blown. Okay. Prayers are given and recited. And then it is thought that if you give to the poor, it ensured the efficacy of the fast and the prayers. And so this was a great opportunity for, as it says, I'm actually, I'm going to quote here, 
opportunities for ostentation. And that is exactly what hypocrites were guilty of. So this was a great opportunity. The trumpets have been blown. And people have a great opportunity because if you give money to the poor, it's going to help bring rain. So obviously rain needs to be given or if you want the prayers, whatever. To be, so people would see you. It's an opportunity for you to give money out for people to see you doing this and look how good you are, that you are doing this, you are giving to the poor. And also, so you're helping with the prayers and everything. It is a great opportunity for you to be able to do this. Now you have to remember when, again, when I've read this before, I didn't know this, but you have to put yourself, put yourself as a first century person. Now that you know, this is like, they know exactly what Jesus is talking about. We don't understand when we hear the trumpets are blown. It's like, okay, yeah, trumpets making a loud noise. Okay, making a... No, no, no. Please understand. Now, this gives you a different perspective on this. So the people, the audience actually knows exactly what Jesus is talking about. And they probably could think about a number of people who actually do that. Let's give even more background and talk about, because Jesus actually used the word hypocrite. Okay, he specifically used hypocrite. So let's give a little more background on this word as well. So I am going to give, this is specifically from kind of that context from the Greek. Okay, because this is Greek. So at the first century Greek time frame, the meaning is of a hypocrite was a theatrical actor. A figurative, a figurative two-faced person, a pretender. Now, let's listen to even some more detail on this. In ancient times, this was a person who put on a mask. I just talked about masks. Actually, put on a mask and pretended to be someone he or she was not. In religion, obviously, a hypocrite is someone who disguises or conceals their true nature, motive, or feelings behind a false appearance. So I want you to get this. So, and, and some of you may know this from some of the Greek plays from that time period, is that actors would actually come on to the stage and do their acting, but they will be holding a mask. But they will also have another mask that they're holding or later on when they come on for a different scene, they'd have a different mask and be acting in a different way. So we, we do understand what a hypocrite is, but I, I want you to get that visual even more starkly for the people of the first century of when they hear hypocrite, they, it's your map, you're changing exactly. Here we think, well, you know, hypocrite, someone says one thing, does another, whatever. But I'm like, it's like your whole persona. Everything about you is just like you change. You become a different person is what Jesus is talking about. So specifically for this context of what Jesus is talking about, this form of hypocrisy mentioned here seems to be People who have actually deceived themselves into believing that they are acting in the best interests of God. Is giving this money and making a display, they actually believe they are acting on behalf of God Almighty. And the thing is, I want you to think about this, even in our own context for this time. If someone is homeless, and it, or if someone is panhandling on the street, do you think they care if someone comes out? And I'm not saying they, you know, make yell out their name. I am so and so giving money to you, whatever. But let's say they don't do it in secret, because there's a way you can do it and give to people in need where no one would know. 
or only the people would know. And actually, you can do it in such a way most of the time where you can make it totally anonymous. But there's sometimes you, you're not going to be able to. But then it's only a few people would know. As opposed to making a more of a display in front of everyone. But even honestly, if think about it. If you were in, in dire straits and someone came out and said, Hey, I am Kyle McLaughlin. And I am about to right now give $500 to so-and-so. Do you think they would care? Now, the people who are around the street, they were like, oh, what is he doing? What, what would I be doing? But honestly, the people in need, they don't care. And actually, you give them $500, or you give them 100 or or 1000 whatever, they're in such a situation that they will see you in a good light. They will. They will say great things about. They would say, oh, well, they would say great things about me. Tell their other friends. I give more money to them. Lots of times that's how you can get people influence. We've heard about bribery, right? But let's say I'm not doing it for that. I think I'm doing it for God. I'm like, this is, you know, God has blessed me and I want to do it. And it's a good thing that you're doing. But the focus is on you and not on God. And actually, it mentions here one of the Pharisees' great weaknesses or a great weakness was that they loved praise from the people. Their focus was getting praise from others as opposed to having that intimate, secret giving relationship with God. They wanted others to look at them well. And we see this in scripture. So we're going to go to a couple of verses in John, and you can bring up that slide where it talks about that uh, so they can see the scriptures. And so we're going to talk about John 5, 44. And John 12, 43. So John 5, 44. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? Say that again. John 5, 44. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? John 12, 43. For they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. Again, John 12, 43. For they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. When I used to read this, and we can switch back, uh, go back to that. When I used to read this, I would be thinking, you silly Pharisees. I wouldn't do that. That's not me. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I I, I do things for God. I want to do it for God. I want God. And then the Holy Spirit said, Kyle, really? Really, Kyle? How many times, Kyle, have you and I've been communicating to you in that still small voice, <clears throat> would you just run right over and tell people something you did because you want them to know it? <sighs> I told you this is very hard on me. I I want to be a person who has that secret relationship with God for giving. But I know I've failed on this many times. And I don't want to go on a tangent because there's other situations where it. I know it's just supposed to be not just in giving. It is something which should just be, be between myself and the Lord. 
and I say something. I, I don't know if you have been in that situation or not. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but I know this is a challenge for me. And I can't, I am like those Pharisees. At times, I, I praise be to God and thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping me where I am better in this. And I, I really do desire just to give and for the Lord to get the glory. But I can still feel, I can just even right now, feel my flesh fighting and wanting to get that praise. Maybe some of you don't have that issue. That is not a challenge for you. But I know I'm not alone with this. Is that we want to get praise. We want to be seen well. And so the next question I have for you today those of you who are here with us live. And again, always those of you who are watching us on demand later on on the uh, on YouTube, I always love to see your comments on this as well. So here's the next one. Here's the next question. Uh, wait, I lost it. Oh, here it is. What is the most popular website in the world today. And today is October 30th, 2022. Yeah. And go. All right. So I'd love to hear your comments on that. I'm going to keep going. I won't give the answer yet. So what is the most popular website in the world today? And today is October 30th, 2022. Most popular in all of the world. Ah, that's a good guess. That's a good guess. Uh, it's, it's not, at least they didn't list this. This is not, this is from Cloudfare. Cloudfare, and this is from last year, December, January. It was December 2021, January 2022. So unless something's changed. But it's not that one. Good guess. Thank you for that. All right, I'm going to give a hint. Here's the next hint. All right, so here we go. Next hint on this. One person guessed Pornhub. So, okay, just letting you know. So those of you who are watching this later, we had one guess and someone else didn't know. So let's, here's the next hint, which should help you on this. It is also the most popular social media site. In the world. Oh, good guess. I wish it were Bible Gateway. Ah, good guess. It used to be Facebook. Oh, look at that. Great job. The answer and the answer is correct. We had someone get the correct answer. The correct answer is TikTok. The answer is TikTok. Oh, wow. It actually recorded a lot of my stuff. So give me a minute. I got to get rid of all this. So, yes, TikTok, believe it or not, isn't it? Well, actually, uh, it's easy to believe if you follow any of this stuff. TikTok is now the most popular. It passed Facebook last year. So, uh, Jared, you guess face Facebook. Facebook was most popular until 2021. Now, I don't have the latest stats. Like I said, my stats are about 10 months old. So I don't know if anything has changed on that. but TikTok has 1.3 billion users. I think it was 1.3. It might be 1.4 uh, billion users. And next question. I'm just going to say this. I'm not going to type this one, but love to see folks in the chat and also see those of you who are watching, uh, again, video on demand, what your thoughts are. Why is TikTok so popular? Why do you believe TikTok is so unbelievably unbelievably popular? Think about it. It is gone from not even existing 
in 2017, well, officially it was released in China uh, by ByteDance. ByteDance is the uh, parent company in China. It was, and it's called Du Wing, D O U I N G, Du Wing. I forget exactly, which means I think reverberation or something like that. Uh, in 2016, but it really wasn't released to other countries until 2017. And so in five years, it has gone from pretty much nothing to 1.3, 1.4 billion users. Why, is, why do you believe it's so popular? Well, and, and if you're typing right now, I'll, I'll mention them once you put it, but I'm going to keep going. We have a desire to be affirmed. We have a desire. We are, we are people who are made to be in relationship. We are wired that way. We see that even from God from the beginning because it's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So our God who is one but three persons there's relation, and that's a mystery. I don't know if we'll ever, through eternity, totally understand that, how that works. But he created male and female to be together because he, he said it is not good for man to be alone. So we were designed for relationship. And this is just my opinion. Is TikTok is a, such a quick, easy way for people to try to get affirmation, to get, try to get people to like them without really knowing them, without really having relationship. It is a false, it is a fake, it is like a mask sort of relationship. But people can click hearts when you do some goofy video or you sing, or some cat thing, or whatever, and you feel it, it, it's like a drug, and you can look online about the psychological challenges that we see with all this social media now. And so that plays into the same issue that we're talking about here, where Giving money, we want to do. We want to do things which get noticed. We want to do things where people like us. But it is so short-sighted. And I need to give you context on one of the words that's in verse two. Six two. So we're going to go back there. The last sentence in verse two. The word here is truly. Truly is Jesus. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Angelique wrote, people are consumed. This is in talking about my question. Why are, are, are people just so into TikTok? She says, people are consumed with the trivial and are focused on themselves while ignoring the most significant. And that's a great lead-in to my talking about this word, truly. Now, I have talked about this in the past, but I also know there are folks who are new to ACIW, so this is a good time for me to uh, go over the background, not the background, the meaning of truly, which actually in the Greek is amen, A-M-E-N, and, and it's going to mention it here, so you're going to hear it twice. That word was transliterated, meaning transliterated from the Hebrew, meaning it was, or excuse me, transcribed exactly without change from the Hebrew. So the Hebrew amen or amen that is in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, they kept it exactly the same. But let's let's talk about a little more of the background of this and what it means when you hear Jesus speak the word truly. So I quote, at various times in the Gospels, Jesus introduces a statement using phrases such as verily, I say, or truly, 
I say this to you. In the Gospel of John, Jesus frequently uses the phrase truly, truly, or verily, verily, or very truly, depending on your translation. The first one was ESV, second one was KJV, excuse me, not everybody knows the the acronyms. Okay, truly, truly is the English Standard Version, verily, verily is the King James Version, and very truly is the New International Version. These expressions all use the Greek word amen, taken directly from the Hebrew word amen. This word has different implications depending on how and where it is used. Jesus' application of the term is noticeably different from prior uses. uses. When Jesus uses the word amen before making a statement or giving a message, so this is the before, when used in this way, the word amen has slightly different implications. Leading off with amen not only implies that what follows is true, but also that the person making the statement has firsthand knowledge and authority about it. So saying verily, verily, before making a statement is a strong claim to truth, presented from an almost audacious attitude. Speaking on worldly or secular matters, saying verily, verily would imply that what follows is that person's own original idea. So from a secular perspective, that's what that means. But when Jesus starts off with these words, such as in Matthew 18, 3, Mark 3, 28, Luke 23, 43, John 8, 51, he is not merely saying, believe me, this is true. He is actually saying, I know this is true firsthand. Since many of these comments are on heavenly, spiritually, or godly issues, Jesus' use of truly, truly is part of his consistent claim of divinity. Jesus is not merely aware of these truths. He is the one who originated these truths. So when he says here, truly, he is emphasizing, I, Jesus, God, I am saying to you, you have received your reward. When you get that affirmation, that adulation from others, from people, there is no reward from me for you. I know so many times I don't think in this perspective. And I have to, and, and the Holy Spirit just even convicted me even more just in this moment. I need to remind myself of this. I, I kind of know it. It's like, okay, you're not going to receive any reward. But I, like, the reward from Jesus, you have to understand, is now through eternity, for forever. I can't even imagine how great the reward is. Can you? And I'm just going to have this reward. Lots of times the people who don't even care about me, just that right now, and that's it. How? I, how Dumb am I in this instance? And how dumb have I been? It's a, how stupid have I been? And I, st I still do it. It's mind-blowing. And you talk about someone who should know better. Guys, I, I, I only have a limited amount of time. There's like so much to unpack here, but I, I need to get through the last two verses. So we're going to keep going. So obviously, followers of Christ are not supposed to act this way. So we're going to go to verses three and four, because then Jesus tells us we are supposed to have a secret CIA, FBI sort of relationship with him when it comes to giving. 
So starting with verse three again. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that your giving may be in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. So when we as followers of Christ do a charitable deed, it is to be done in secret. Our charitable deeds should be for the father and to not gain any notoriety whatsoever, not even a little bit. Now, I I mentioned this earlier. I'm going to reiterate this. This does not mean, okay, if I cannot give secretly in an FBI, CIA sense where nobody could know I'm not supposed to give. No, that's not what it's saying. Because there are certain times you're, the Holy Spirit is going to unction you to give, and there's going to be some people that know it. But that's not your heart posture. Okay? That's not your heart posture. Your posture, your heart posture is really for God to only know it. And for God, and if it's a situation where you can't, some people are going to know it, you just want God to get the glory. Uh, Again, the Sarah Groves song, uh, you are the sun, I'm the moon. It's like any time you get that praise, you reflect that praise because you're you're reflecting God to others. So I want to make sure that if I receive any praise, glory, I give that right back a hundred percent to God. And I'm going to, I'm just talking about something for myself, which always remember when I started tithing, I didn't want to tithe, but I finally got to a point after years that for me, I believed I needed to tithe. I didn't like it, but I did it. And then over time, I, I can't say I quite have gotten to enjoy it, but I've gotten to the point where if I, if I don't, I don't feel right, which is a huge difference from where I was. But I had to start doing it where I really didn't like it at all. And so I am a big believer is that even if your heart isn't quite there yet, but you want your heart to be the right place. Now, this is different from you don't want it. No, you do want, you do believe, you do totally embrace the fact that you want God to receive all of the glory. You're not there yet. So you do the work anyway. And over time, your heart will come along. That's for those of us who are like me. Now, some of you are like right there and your hearts with your actions. But I'm saying, you know, this is the right thing. You believe it. You want to do it. You want God to receive 100% of the glory, but you don't feel that way. You do it anyway. You say, to God be the glory. And you know, part of you wants to get that glory. (laughs) And sometimes it may not even seem like the right place for you to do it. You may even get a check to say it out loud, but say it inside your head. Like, God, this this is yours. You are the one that I don't want to be. No. Even though part of you is still saying you can feel your flesh saying, yes, you do. Yeah, yeah because you did it. And if we remember that we were created by God, that anything and everything that we do is only because of what he has done, it makes it a lot easier. The big issue here as I close comes back to that first original sin and due to time, I'm not going to go too far into it again, but it goes to that sin of pride, the sin of pride. Pride is, it it just factors in so much of we what we end up doing, which is inappropriate for those of us who follow Christ. It is pride 
Uh oh. Am I still there? Yep. Can you see here? I hear something saying like do do do. I'm assuming we can still hear me. Can you still hear me? I'm just double checking to make sure if somebody can put on the chat. I'm going to keep going, but for a moment it seemed like someone might not be able to hear me. Nope, I hear me. Okay. All right. Whether it was Satan who wanted to put himself up above God and he wanted to get credit and then he was cast down. Or uh, you see throughout history, Pharaoh raising himself up. Nebuchadnezzar. I can go on and on and on about people over and over. Our pride. And I know it's my pride that I wanted to say, I want to say, I did it. It's me. Look at me. And that's not what it is. It's not me. It's not you. When we do those things which which were are good and gracious and kind and helpful. All of it is God because we are God's workmanship. Whatever you do, it's God's because God created you. God gave you those gifts. If you are acting humbly, it is his humility in you. If you are being generous, it is his heart of generosity that is enabling you. Enabling me. It's not us. It's him. My prayer is for the Holy Spirit to do what he needs to do in me. And for those of you who have this challenge, God bless you all of you who do not have this challenge at this time. And that the Holy Spirit has already done that work. But I'm, we're praying, I'm praying right now for all those like myself who need the Holy Spirit to continue to do the work in us to root out all of the meanness. Not meanness. Me. M-E. Double quotes around it. Ness. N-E-S-S. That is still in me when it comes to giving and other things as well. We need to be more like the Macedonia, Macedonian church. Now, I'm going to take a pause here. When I think of church, I still see a building first. Even though we keep saying church is a people, not a building. Remember, church is from the Greek word ecclesia, which means the called out ones, which is people. I am going to be emphasizing this more when I actually do see this written in scripture. So what I am imploring and begging us and asking the Holy Spirit for us to do is when you read and hear something like the churches in Macedonia, those are the people in Macedonia that are in different groups, local churches, and local churches are not local buildings, but are local people. So I, I, it's a mindset change, which I think will be very helpful for us when we read scripture and read the church, the universal church. It's a group of people. It is not a building. And I know I am not the only person who deals with it because majority of people, actually 99, actually I'd say 98, 99% of people, when they talk about churches, like you're going to church, it's not, no, you are going to be with the people in our church. We're going to be with the people in the church. I'm not going to the church. When we start thinking of the church as people, your mindset will change. You may not believe me, but it does. So we're when I'm talking about, and I say, align our hearts 
with the churches of the people of Macedonia or the churches of Macedonia, it is the people, the followers of Christ in Macedonia. Where, and please bring up the 2 Corinthians 8 5 slide. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. Say that one more time. And this, not as we expected, expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. Our giving or basically our anything is prompted first by obeying God. So it's obeying God that leads us to having compassion for people. It's, it's putting him first. Then we actually interact and bless others. Folks, I want you, I beg you, and I'm talking to myself here too. Even if you don't feel it at this time, speak it to yourself. Preach it to yourself. We are to give. We are to give unabashedly, wholeheartedly, as led by the Spirit of God, and do our best that we can to think of ourselves as secret agents, secret giving agents for God. Where we want people, they don't know, it's just, it, it came, and people say, it's from the Lord. The Lord has blessed me. The Lord has given. Praise be to God. And the more you do that, and then this, I'm preaching to myself, for those of you like me, it's going to be hard because you want to get that praise. You want to get that glory. You want to get, quote unquote, that TikTok rush. But I want you to remember that our Father, our King, when you develop that secret giving relationship with Him, where He only sees in secret. He will reward us out in the open in time and for eternity. Praise be to God for his word. Well, I just want to thank you so much for being here with us here at A Church in the World. I, I never want to stop or leave without encouraging someone who may be listening to us to know if you're hearing the voice of God in the sense I'm saying you, you, you have come to the point where you believe that Jesus is Lord. There are no special words you need to say to come to God because he's already come to you. Your heart has already been changed, but you want to let the rest of the world know. You need to come out. It talks about that we should confess. So if you know, admit that you know that you have sinned against the holy God, and you want to acknowledge that and, and, and say that to him. You don't need to be with anybody else. You could be just by yourself. And you believe in your heart that Jesus is God. And he came down to earth to live, live, live a sinless life and to take the weight of all of our sins upon himself, to wash us clean, for us to be innocent when we come before the judge of the universe. Just tell him in your own words. Confess with your mouth this to him. And if that is sincere, and if that is true, 
And if God has moved on your heart, he has turned that stony heart to flesh. You are a child of God for eternity, and that can never be taken away from you. It is a gift from God. And as Jesus said, those you have given me, no one will take away. I pray and ask you to please contact someone you know who is seeking after the Lord, who knows the Lord, so they can help you with the next steps. Hopefully they know of a local church body, local church body, not a building, local group of people is what I'm talking about, that you can join. So you can start on your walk of what we call the walk of sanctification, but your walk with Jesus. If you don't know anyone like that, please contact us. Either send us an email, info at A, C, A as in Apple, C as in church, I as in Iris, W as in wagon, dot O-R-G, or just go to our website, ACIW.org, and hit contact us, and tell us how we can help you. And we are more than willing and thankful to be able to do that. We love y'all. Next week is November, believe it or not. Hopefully you'll be able to join us next week here at A Church in a World where we love coaching people for the glory of God. See you next week.